your host to Esports Connected. I am so excited for this show today with Mike and Kristen Anderson, as well as Landon Gorbenko. We're here to talk about how Fit Gamer is quickly becoming the gold standard for health and wellness for esports. Welcome to the show, you guys. I'm so excited to have you today. Very happy to be here. Right on. So, you know, Fit Gamer. It's just so exciting. I downloaded it last night. I wanted to wait to the show live to talk about it. But yeah, how did you guys um, come up with the idea? What was, um, I know you have an incredible amount of experience in gaming, Mike. And Landon, oh my gosh, you, um, you've been gaming since before you could even talk, right? Your first <laughs> word. Wait, wasn't your first word game? Yeah, it was, it was the NES. That was my first word, NES. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And then Chris, you know, you, you have made such a, uh, you have had such an incredible career. So we're excited to share everyone's journey. I'm not even sure where we should start, but we have a full house today. So um, who would like to start? I can kick things off and just give a little bit of the background. It's funny because we didn't really come up with Fit Gamer. Fit Gamer kind of came up with us. Um, one of Mike's professors at Pepperdine from 30 years ago had, you know, been running the sports medicine department there and working for different organizations. And one of those organizations was a sponsor of esports teams and streamers and had a high performance division that he had done some consulting for. And they said, you know, gee, you've helped us with our motocross and our cyclists, and now we're sponsoring esport athletes. Can you help us now translate traditional sport to esport? Like, what does that mean? How do we make sense of this? And he developed what is now the Fit Gamer Five Pillars of Health so that these athletes need to focus on physical maintenance, mental conditioning, lifestyle, which is time away from the keyboard nutrition and sleep. And if we can get our arms around those five things, these athletes will be successful and they won't have to be retiring at the age of 22 because of, you know, illnesses or injuries. And after kind of developing this program, they said, great, this makes a lot of sense, but how do we implement it? And he said, well, I know the right person to implement this. He's an educator. He has been in fitness his whole life. And he was my former student and is now my coach. And he said, Mike Anderson. And um, they said, okay, well, send him to the cloud nine house. And so Mike showed up at cloud nine, not really knowing very much about it. And this was all in the kind of 2018 timeframe that Holden was doing this work and bringing Mike in. And after a few years or a couple of years of working, you know, every day with various players at cloud nine, you know, kind of day in and day out and um, seeing a lot of benefit, not only in physical fitness, but helping them dial in their nutrition. What sort of food should we have at the house? How are we going to get the players to go to sleep at 10 o'clock instead of staying up all night, not scrimming with their teammates, but doing solo queue or playing, you know, other games. Um, And so he kind of helped implement the five pillars of health there. And fast forward into 2020, Mike's professor, who is our chief science officer, Dr. Holden McRae, um, was brought into another opportunity in esports, health and wellness. And he again reached out to Mike And Mike then reached out to me because my background is in business. So I'm a former banker, um, consultant, and um, this was really a new opportunity. And, And as Holden and Mike and I were talking, we said, you know, gosh, Mike has been having so much success with Cloud9. And um, we know that Jack Etienne, the owner of the team, is so happy with everything that's been going on there. There's there's probably a way that we could bring this to the gaming community. And that was kind of how Fit Gamer was born. And, you know, we we basically created a deck, you know, that was kind of my job was the business um, side of things and put together a deck. And Mike, grabbed Jack after a workout in the garage gym at the League of Legends house and said, you know, my wife, Kristen, and I would like to talk to you about something. Do you have time after, you know, one day after the workout? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. come over, you know, tomorrow. And so we showed up with my laptop and we were all had our masks on and, 
you know, prime COVID time. And he said, you know, you can't come through the house, but go along the side of the house and we'll sit in the backyard at the picnic table. And we did. And we shared with him, you know, we think that what Mike has been doing can be brought to the industry at large. And we think the forum or the way to do that is through technology and through a mobile app where we can basically take his programming and what we've developed here and just replicate it so that everyone can download it, can do the workout, can do yoga, can do meditation, um, can have access to mental conditioning tools, to nutrition information. And I think Jack was like kind of speechless for like, and then he just, he just looked at us and he's like, oh my gosh, yes. Like, yes, we need this. Like, yes, our whole industry needs this. And how can I help and be a part of it? And just, I mean, having him in your corner, like having Jack Etienne in your corner, and he is just such an amazing leader and he really represents everything of fit gamer and values it but also like we talk about the byproduct of doing a program like this is is developing a foundation of character and he just has so much character of like doing the right thing for the space i mean there are you know i'm sure certain coaches out there and not necessarily in esports but in any industry who would say oh my gosh, we've been doing this and we're doing it right and we're winning. So no, we don't want to share this with anybody. And he took exactly the opposite approach to that and was like, this is what our industry needs. Like we all need this. And, um, and with that, we were kind of, you know, off to the races and, you know, it it was shortly thereafter and please stop me if I'm going on, but it was shortly thereafter that we got connected to Landon And, you know, Landon just, we all, I think, just kind of connected immediately and, you know, said, hey, this is what we're doing. Do you want to join us from a mental conditioning perspective and also, um, you know, just business development and really anchoring Fit Gamer and he embodies everything that is Fit Gamer. And with that, I think I'll hand it off to Landon just to share his story. And and I think you'll understand why um, everything about Landon resonates with everything Fit Gamer. Awesome. Uh, Yeah. So as as, Megan, as you're mentioning uh, in my intro that I've been uh, gaming since before I could walk and I always mentioned or to always tell the story of how uh, when I was younger, I remember playing uh, TMNT 2, so Ninja Turtles 2 and Mega Man 2 constantly to the point where my mom started to hide the NES and I would run into the closet to try and find it and sneak it out. Uh, and so <laughs> good or bad, who knows? But that was that was part of my early life is I, I fell in love with gaming and that was just such a cornerstone to who I was for the entirety of my my growing up uh, all the way from NES into N64. Favorite game there was Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, and then Xbox and PC and, you know, pretty much played the full gambit of any game pretty much. So uh, it's been a lifelong thing for me. And as I went into my teen years and I was exiting my teen years, um, I kind of took on a lot of the typical negative, uh, what people think of like the negative stigmas when it comes to the, with gaming, I went down that road as, is kind of cliche as possible where I was, um, I gained a lot of weight. So I was classified as obese or morally obese. At one point I had a lot of mental health issues, like social anxiety and very difficult time making friends, a little bit of depression, uh, pretty much the full, the full buffet of of issues that can kind of happen and as I was exiting my teen years I really wanted to make a change in my life and figure out like how can I fix a lot of these things that uh, I'm struggling with and so um, as Chris mentioned you can kind of see the journey unfolding a little bit for me and I started with uh, I lost a lot of the weight I went and got my degree in psychology to help me with some of the other things Uh, it's kind of like the the joke is if you go into psychology, it's because you're trying to fix something, right? And so I did that, went to psychology, fell in love with it. And as I was finishing my degree in psychology, I realized that I didn't want to be a classic counselor or therapist or clinician in that sense. But I really wanted to find a way to bring it back into the esports industry. And at that time, I was I had coffee with a lady who works with a lot of the Canadian Olympians about what she does, because she does the mental performance sports psych world with Olympians. And she was explaining to me her field. And I immediately fell in love. And I, that's it. That's where I'm going. Uh, I actually went home and applied to the exact same school that she went to. 
uh, got in. So I really did follow in her footsteps to a certain degree uh, with the intent of bringing it back into the esports industry because I want to uh, do two primary things. One being change the way the next generation of gamers think and approach both gaming so that we can avoid a lot of these negative things. Um, and the way that I see gaming in general is that we oftentimes think of gaming as a negative, right? Or, or there's a stigma that gaming is negative. And I see it more of a, more like a, a neutral vessel where there's positives and negatives that come along with it. And if we can remove the positives and enhance the, the, or remove the negatives and enhance the positives, what we can do is we can create a, a vehicle that helps to stimulate a lot of healthy change in the next generation and engage them on a platform they want. So bringing that skills, have that knowledge and the experience I had into the gaming world so that we can do that. We can create gaming as a vehicle for positive change. Uh, and then also to really understand what makes experts tick in esports. So how did Bjergsen get to where he is? How did Faker get to where he is? How do we prolong their careers and prevent a lot of the negative issues that come along with it? And then how do we create the next wave of pros like Bjergsen and Faker? Uh, those are really the two primary things that I, I focus on now with Fit Gamers is change the way the next generation thinks. And then how do we create the best possible gamers or the best version of themselves that we can? Uh, and so you can see my journey right from honestly, like five years old, four years old, playing video games all the way up to now, still, still constantly playing uh, fairly highly ranked League of Legends player. So self plug right there. <laughs> so it's still, it's still a very, very foundational part to who I am. And that changes the way that I think about my industry as well, where um, I was, I was talking to a, a CDL coach one time and he said, the reason why he likes talking to me is because I think like a gamer, I'm not a uh, a traditional sport or I'm not a um, military man or I'm not a musician, I'm a gamer. And so when I talk about the issues within gaming, I'm coming from the context of a gamer. And so I can understand uh, where does the fatigue set in? Why, why are you getting frustrated in these moments? Where's the team communication or team culture breaking down? They can pinpoint those a little bit quicker because at the end of the day, I'm a gamer. So I've been through all of those things. So it helps me understand the context of the people that I'm working with a little bit more as well. And so that's me, quick TLDR yeah, version of it. It's, you know, and it's all, you know, every, like whenever I feel like I'm on a, a, a body, mind, spirit sort of meeting with some advisory and some work we do, there you are. I see your name popping up, at, you know, all across the esports and wellness space. It's, it's always lovely, lovely to work with you. Thank you so much. And Mr. Anderson, we saved the best for last. We know you have a really great errand to run. So we're keeping the show on a good pace. Tell us a little bit what, about yourself how you got here, how you married the greatest woman in the world and wowzer <laughs> and, 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 and wowzer, what a company, you know, that you guys are, that you guys are a part of. So please share. All right. Uh, for me, it's, it really is everything, movement, activity, fun, play. Like I grew up playing traditional sports. Um, I did have the original Atari system, gaming system. So I started with Pong and tank combat and for me it was i would i came in God, it was probably first or second grade right so 1975 76 that i experienced my first um gaming you know platforms but i couldn't come inside to play the games because i was outside all the time you know so, uh, uh, within traditional sports and just play all i wanted to do was that kind of activity and so um, I mean, very circuitously, um, we'll say 36 years later, I'm starting a company called Go Outside and Play. So the idea is to, um, at the time, was to, to kayak, climb, surf, trail run, anything that could get individuals um, kind of out of the house to do things in the natural world was, was my focus. Um, and that's what I've loved to do, you know, my entire life. Um, I, I do have a, a sports science background, so I went into the, into college understanding that um, I do like the science of, of all of that human movement, um, and because I'm more of a practitioner than an academic researcher, I, I want people to experience physical activity, the benefits of health and fitness, but really through the idea of let's, let's have fun with this and let's become healthier, fitter. Um, and then just, you know, see where it goes, see, see what my, if I'm fit and healthy in a certain domain, it's going to increase not just my level of health, but it, my, my interest and my confidence in doing other things. Um, we have seven-year-old twins and it's cool to see that when they become confident and capable in one thing, 
I mean, you see all of this playing out in, in their lives. Um, and with this, I, I've been really teaching for the, about the past 30 years in a variety of capacities, many of them in the physical education realm, but also everything from um, K through eight, um, you know, childhood education. I was a, a classroom teacher for uh, a couple of years in the traditional system. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Northern Thailand. So I taught elementary school, um, a number of different levels in elementary school there um, in the health nutrition type of domain. Um, and at some point I went on to teach at the university level, running the physical education department at Pepperdine University, where I also went in a number of different directions. I, um, I opened a, a gym here in Malibu, the hometown of Pepperdine, um, so that I could, you know, essentially uh, have a place where people really, I wanted to have a people, a place where people could come hang out and do things that were, were fun and would help them along their fitness journey. Um, so along that capacity, I in, invited, uh, my former professors at Pepperdine, which is a mile away from my gym, um, to be my students within the strength and conditioning realm. Like they are the academics who had taught a lot about it. And while they're very active and have their own um, abilities and uh, capabilities along the physical and, and sports world, none of them had really done um, kind of the strength and conditioning stuff. So I was able to become their, their professor uh, within the gym world, you know, deadlifting, back squatting, um, and along this whole different line of, um, you know, functional movement that they had not experienced before. Um, but I've also been able to, um, to teach in so many different capacities. I later on went to take, uh, uh, university students back to Thailand to do some geographical and, uh, sociology based kind of ecology work. Um, that led me to a degree in, uh, outdoor experiential education. Um, so all of this, you know, stuff that I've done in my background, that kind of the highlights are I like to, I like to learn things and yeah. then I like to teach things. I like to be physically active and kind of just see where it goes. And what I realized at some point um, after Dr. McCray asked me to start working with the Cloud9 team is that um, my, my sort of accidental expertise lies within this idea of just meeting a group of indiv individuals. Um, on the fly, sort of assessing where they're at in a number of different ways and just teaching and working with them um, with what they've had, with, with where they're at, with what they've got and just making them better. Um, and, you know, one of our classic uh, catchphrases at Fit Gamer is who doesn't want to be better is what Jack Entian talked to me about when, um, you know, we were talking with him about Fit Gamer. So um, I've been able to take, um, kind of any, any either ranging from non-mover to beginner and help them become uh, better, stronger, faster in the physical realm. And the bonus is that while we're working on these very tangible things in the physical world, it's so obvious how they connect to other things that nobody even really thinks that they're working on. You know, when we work on coordination, agility, balance, and strength, um, it makes them more coordinated, balanced, and strong in everything that they do. So in their relationships, in their work, um, in the way that they relate to themselves, in their choices related to nutrition and other activities that they choose to um, experience. Um, and it just, it, it, it becomes a thing where once you get good at this, it can take you anywhere. Uh, yeah. Wow. I mean, I mean a lot of different ways, so. It's just, I, what do we call fit gamer? Do we call it like a digiceutical? I mean, I don't want to like put it into a, into a, you know, but, um, I'll, I'll be straight. I'm going to just go back for a second. So every day, you know, I try and it, I don't stick to this every day, but for probably 30 years since I, well, I don't want to, I don't want to age myself here too much, but, um, since I, you know, left high school and I was an adult, I'll, I'll just not forget. I, I, I went to my grandfather who won the senior Olympics at 89 doing backstroke to give you an idea. <laughs> so, um, I said, how do I make it in life? Like really? And he, next thing he shows up with a book on a triathlon and I was thinking, oh man, I should have never asked him. Like, I can't do a triathlon. <laughs> That's what my first thought was. And then the next time I saw me, I had two more books. So I thought, well, I guess I needed to do this triathlon, but I would never 
ever be where I am today without doing something every day for my body, for my mind, and for my spirit. When I looked at your arching pillars, I was surprised to see sleep. I mean, that has been one of my secrets is that I really do not go any day without the proper amount of sleep, even if I like have to go to bed unreasonably early. And I just do, and I'll just lay there, meditate, pray, whatever it is, and fall asleep. Um, it's so neat. Like, do we call this a, what do we call this app? Because I've been doing digiceutical apps, the, the ones, you know, that I have found um, in the last, I would say year or two. Um, because for years and years too, always I've had a coach. My grandfather never let us call him grandfather because he was not into that word. He, so he had me call him coach. <laughs> I mean, you know, he was really into mindset and, and, you know, living it up, you know, in this lifetime in a healthy way. And, um, so obviously I've studied body, mind, spirit, health, nutrition, sleep, you know, exercise, everything. Uh, what do we call this? What does this fall into? And how exciting is it that it's going to be at our fingertips? And it already is. And um, I just downloaded it yesterday. So fill me in, fill the audience in. Let's hear it. I mean, I guess I would say it is a holistic health technology. Um, you know, we call ourselves a technology platform. Um, and I think one of the things that's really unique to Fit Gamer is that there are often these five pillars of health are often siloed. And so people do their fitness, people do their yoga, people have, go here for meditation, they go here for um, nutrition and diet tips. And it's like, this is something that you have it all in one place. And what we really, you know, at the hub of Fit Gamer is this kind of diagram that we have, we can send it to you afterwards, but it's basically how we connect the dots and how, you know, our bodies are integrated systems and you can't silo these things into different places. Because as you know, if you don't get a good night's sleep, you wake up craving carbs and then you eat bad food and then you don't have energy to exercise. So you don't exercise and then you're in a bad mood and then you don't feel like going to sleep. And it's like this circle the circle of unwellness really. That's and right. so you can't just look at one thing in isolation. You really have to look at everything together. And what we wanted to do was not to kind of preach these things, but to give people the tools to do it. And I think a lot of that comes from both Landon and Mike's kind of experiential backgrounds and how important it is to just have people do it. Like once you start doing it, everything else will fall into place. Like, don't, don't worry about it. Just start. And, um, you know, we have seen this in real life within fit gamer. We started training some of the cloud nine teams around the world virtually last summer. And it was our first real, real foray into kind of coaching from re coaching remotely and the app wasn't yet finished yet. So we were kind of just becoming a, a live version of the app. And these were people who, you know, really many of them had no experience with physical fitness or in this realm of health. And what happened, you know, Mike would say by accident, you know, is that once we just said, listen, we're just going to pick a time a day. And we, all we ask is that you show up, you just have to show up every day at this time. And, and let and put your put it, put yourself in our hands. We know what we're doing. We're not going to hurt you. We're not going to let you yeah. get injured. We're going to take care of you and we're going to hear you and work with you. And we're going to meet you where you are. Mm -hmm. And after about six weeks, one of our coaches who had come to our gym over a decade ago, who I actually grew up in Chicago. Um, and you know, as he, he joined the gym and we were like, oh, you grew up here. I grew up here. Oh, we graduated high school in the same year and realized that like we were on the same field, our senior year of high school and didn't know it. Um, but he is a former Marine triathlete, um, has led coaching, um, you know, programs for triathlons. He's now a self kind of taught pilot. He decided he was really interested in 
flying and went back and got his um, certified in, in becoming a pilot. And just, again, represents so much of, of what Fit Gamer values. And he's one of our coaches. And he, six weeks into this, just like threw out to the group. So guys, girls, whoever, you know, like, tell me, how is it going? Like, what have you noticed? And, you know, afterwards he shared with us, he said, so someone raised their hand and said, yeah, well, I guess I've noticed that I've been making, I haven't been eating as much junk food. And, you know, Matt said, oh, why is that? He said, well, I feel like, I mean, I put in so much effort to do these workouts. Why am I going to afterwards go and then eat junk? Like it just undoes everything that we've just done. And he, yeah, I get that. Someone else raises their hand. Well, I mean, yeah, so I've lost like 12 pounds. Like, I don't know really why that is, but, um, and, and just the conversations that people would reach out to coaches afterwards and say, Hey, do you have a few minutes to stick around afterwards? I want to ask you about X, Y, and Z. And so I think our app is it basically gives you that personal coaching. It gives you everything you need and it takes all of the thought out of it. So what we've tried to recreate in the app is just show up every day and give us an hour. And you really don't even have to give us a full hour, but that's what we do with the teams that we coach. And basically we program it for you. So every day there's daily programming in the app. And so on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you get a workout and it's programmed and sequenced in a way that, you know, is, is programmed by Mike and Matt in a way that makes sense for people's physical bodies. There's conversations that happen throughout that kind of help to motivate and encourage people and teach people um, how to do things properly. On Tuesdays, you get a yoga session with our yoga guru, um, who is amazing and um, who had actually been my mentor in yoga teacher training after I left my banking career um, like 15 years ago. And then on Thursdays, you have mental conditioning with Landon. And so it's just like you download the app and today you see, oh, we're going to talk about, you know, tilt, or we're going to talk about how to focus when we can't focus, or we're going to do some breathing. And on the weekends, we give educational content. So not just saying like, eat this, but actually the science of nutrition. So we have a nutrition partner, nutrition network out of South Africa, who happened to be founded by Dr. McRae's PhD mentor, um, Tim Noakes, who is kind of a, a leading expert in, in his field. And we give educational content on the science of nutrition, how your body works to absorb nutrients, why it makes sense to eat these types of food, but providing the why. Um, and on Sunday, we have lifestyle content, which is, you know, Landon from the get-go has talked about how for in his journey, doing things like camping and connecting to nature and having a, a reason to kind of step away from the game for a little bit really strengthens his ability to come back better. And so motivating and inspiring people to, you know, go outside and play back to Mike's Mike's kind of mantra in life, like go outside and play and experience nature and um, try something new, like trying new things is really good for us. Like getting in too much of a comfort zone just stagnates everything. And um, I know Jack Etienne has said to us when he looks to his players and talks to his players about Fit Gamer and, you know, many of them have never done any of the things that they're doing is one of the big things for him is their confidence. And he's, you know, just how much he's watched their confidence grow by someone looking at something and saying, I don't think I can do that. And someone saying, yes, you can try it. And then them coming back and being like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Like, how did I, how did I do that? Well, you did. And so just kind of to Mike's point of how that translates into everything else. So the app is meant to be a, you know, one-stop shop for health and wellness. And um, we have, in addition to our content, a metrics. So we call our content library, our vault. So you can go into the vault, you can do daily programming along with us and the rest of the community. You can go into the vault and pick what you want out of any of these different topics. And then we have a different section of the app, which is called metrics. And this is really Dr. McRae's passion, which is that in order to develop new habits, you have to pay attention. 
you know, in yoga, they call it self-study. Like you actually, you have to turn things inside and pay attention to yourself and what you're doing. And so our metrics are a way to, for people to track their performance themselves and the five pillars of health. How much water did you drink? Did you reach your target? Check. Yes. How much sleep did you get? Um, how did you feel? Like what's your emotional state today? Um, Uh, did you do any physical movement? What did you do? What hobbies did you do? Did you get time in nature? So these are all in the, um, in the metric section. And that's so interesting because I'm looking at just my app here, my, um, my apps that are health and fitness. It just, I'm just very present to how discombobulated my health and fitness program is. Um, I can't wait. I downloaded this yesterday. But I have, I have nine apps in my health. <laughs> I do. And I, I, I'm not going to go into naming them all, but I track my water. I track my meditation. I track my fitness. Um, oh my gosh. I have an online coach. Um, oh my gosh. I mean, I can't wait because this is so important. I have a story and I don't know how relevant it is, but I grew up with all brothers And my mom cooked for these big athletes that were, and here I was eating like I honestly, how they were eating. So when I was, when I stopped growing, I, I didn't stop growing. (laughs) So I went to, I was young. I was very young. I went to Weight Watchers to just learn how I should eat. Cause I didn't really know what journey my body was going to be. And I wanted to stay as healthy as I could. And I'll just never forget that I loved the meetings and I stayed on track and I learned, I still don't cook that well, but I learned like portion, like how much portion I should have and portion control. And, um, I brought a friend and she was like, Oh, I get it. I'm just going to get the book. And what I learned is I maintained this amazing community that taught me like eating and feeling well. And this was, this was, you know, decades ago. Um, and it was really about the community, actually. Weight Watchers wasn't about getting weight every week and going home and reading and cooking, right. As much as it was about like having accountability partners, having people I would see every week. Um, that, that was, that it was not about the book. The book can be an anchor to the program. And I just knew when, when my friend said that I was like disappointed, like, ah. Oh, You know, it's, and this is so exciting. Can you talk a little bit about like the community portion? I, are you saying I can join and be part of this community and come every day, seven days a week? Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, there's a couple ways that, um, you know, we totally agree that community, and I know Mike would say, and Landon as well, that, you know, certainly at at cloud nine and in the garage, it's the fact that, you know, some days there's like 22 people there, um, all working out together, all doing the same thing. And we really wanted to not just put information out there. That's one of the reasons why we have daily programming so that everyone is doing this. Ideally, everyone can, if they want to be a part of the community, can be doing the same things and be communicating with each other. If you're in the app, you can go into discord and talk to someone and say, oh my God, did you do that workout today? Or, oh, wow, you know, look at this. Landon went, you know, snow camping or, I mean, could you believe that? Um, Peter saw a deer outside that he had tracked the footprints to. Um, And that's what we do as a team within the app. Um, But we've kind of taken it one step further. And what comes along with the app is a web app that's called our team dashboard. And the genesis for this was really that even within, you know, organizations that have a lot of resources, oftentimes right hand isn't talking to left hand. So maybe there's a sleep person coming in or a mental conditioning person coming in, but they're not talking to the physical person. And it was like, we need a place where coaches can actually see what's going on with players and everyone see the same thing and be able to intervene, observe, support, encourage, jump in. And so the team dashboard is basically a team package that you can purchase within the app. And it's, you basically get 10 users and now you're on a team. You're going through the fit gamer journey with your team. 
and you have a coach that is your coach or your manager that is tracking everyone's fit gamer score. You have a score, you're kind of competing against yourself and your teammates, or, you know, just using that score as a way to encourage each other. Um, and it's a way for coaches and managers to take note of, you know, when we were beta testing, Mike had his sports medicine class doing it. And he came in to class one day and he said, okay, why did nobody sleep on Friday night? Like, why did everybody, why was everyone sleep off? And they said something like, oh, well, there was this event or there is this thing, but it really does give you such a window into, you know, your player, your team dynamics, their game readiness. Um, we have in the app as well, like an after action report, which I know is dear to Landon's heart, which is a way to give people who don't have a coach, right? People who are gaming on their own or are on a team like in high school or may not have resources to go through and evaluate again, building that self-reflection, self-awareness. How did I play? What were, what was I motivated by today? What were, did I meet my goals? Um, where did I get off track and being able to just take yourself through that, that examination. Um, and just the last thing I would add is that everything within our app is curated and directed towards cognitive performance. So everything is with the mindset of from a neuroscience perspective, why does this make sense? And that's really the driver for us. Wow, Landon, can you share a little bit more about that? Because it's obviously, I mean, that that is so incredible. Like no one said to me, and I, this is like just my example, no one said to me, really Weight Watchers is about being here. You know, it wasn't for me even about losing weight. It was about learning and being in community with like-minded people that were wanting to be healthy. So uh, yeah, so that accountability, tell us more. Cause we, you know, we've come a long way since my, my, my experience. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about like, let's rewind to time in time to 2001, give or take when, when Halo was emerging on the original Xbox, um, it really started a wave of like LAN events, right? Like people wanted to be in each other's basements playing games with each other. People wanted to go to these big events. And um, then you see kind of the emergence of, of internet gaming, right? Like playing with people in the same game. And I know that gaming is often, historically speaking, looked at as like a very isolated activity where people just want to sit in a dark room and play video games by themselves until their eyes fall out. Right. Like that's kind of what a lot of people think about it. But you can see if you track the timeline of gaming at every point along the journey, it was like, how do we make this more community focused? How do we get people hanging out with each other playing games? How do we get to all these big LAN events? How do we get the Internet happening so that we can be playing games with each other across cities, across countries, across the globe? You can really you can really feel it's tangible, at least when I look backwards in time, it's tangible how the gaming community has always, always been very dead set on making this industry something that's community based. And so it's, it's something that's innate to a lot of gamers in general as well. Much, I, maybe I shouldn't say gamers. it's something innate to humans, right? Like we want to be connected with each other. Uh, and gaming isn't this isolated activity that people do by themselves. It's an activity that they love to do. And they're trying to find ways to do it with other people that share that same passion. It's really exciting for me to see that kind of unfold as time goes that yeah, man, gamers want to be with each other. They want that community. They feel like a sense of belonging. There's nothing better than playing, for me, there's nothing better than playing League of Legends, Apex, Valorant, um, about to start trying Rocket League. But uh, there's nothing better than playing those games with friends of mine that I haven't seen for a couple of years, right? Like it's a huge connector. And so if you take that concept and you plug it into anything, right? Like fitness becomes easier when it's community. Mental conditioning becomes easier when you're building team culture and team dynamics. Everything becomes easier when you think about it in a group. Um, and so you're just trying to, to, to meet that base human need of feeling connected with each other. And through, through connection, you kind of get that accountability, right? Like what's, when you're looking at building a new habit, what's one of the best things that you can be doing for building that habit? Well, there's a couple of things, but one of those is making sure you have an accountability partner. So somebody that's checking in on you. Uh, why is that the case? It's just because it's that connection again, right? You have somebody there that's expecting something for you or is relying on you for something and you feel a need to connect with them or you feel a need to meet that. So accountability becomes such a, a cornerstone to change as well. Just again, kind of diving into that community aspect. And so 
Uh, I think it's just really crazy. And this is why like Discord is successful. This is why online gaming is successful, why LAN events are successful. It's because people are hunting for that community. So if you give them, uh, if you have something that people don't necessarily, when they're thinking about, they don't necessarily want to eat right. They don't necessarily want to work out. They don't necessarily want to practice meditation. But when you give them that community aspect where people are, uh, a term I love is suffering together, right? Like misery <laughs> loves company in a sense where you get them in, in that journey together and it becomes... Um, for a lot of people, almost like a competition where you start working out and you're like, you're getting that competitive attitude, getting uh kind of raising, or you're getting into a group dynamics or culture building exercise. And that's not so much competitive, but you can start feeling that people are connecting with each other, those bonds that are forming. Uh, and so I think the community aspect of any kind of meaningful change, it really does require a really solid foundation of community and the gaming community, despite what, uh, history might want to tell you a lot of the stigma is gaming is one of the most social social aspects out there like you can't you can't game anymore without being connected to somebody and we're just tapping into that to a certain degree even like you know mike you inspired me i know we only we only have a couple more minutes we want to think about some parting advice but mike for a couple things i just wanted to play with my brothers right and and it was difficult they were very athletic and i wasn't as much So I bought my family's first Atari after I worked all summer babysitting and I was so excited and we played as a family on when it rained, we didn't, we went outside first. We, I grew up in a village that had pool and things. And it was like way, way cool being outside, but when it rained, like we played number two, when we went out that in that time, there were physical gaming units. So Pac-Man or whatever. Um, I always looked at who won. I would look at the initials back then. And no matter what I did, I could never win. I just couldn't, I wasn't good. It, it it was what it was. And there were just things that for the most part, I always lost playing with my brothers at everything. And I just got used to that. Um, and never did I see my initials on a, on, you know, a, a, as a winner. So I, I just, what would you tell someone that has my story? Cause I still wanted to play and just, I never swam as fast. I never ran as fast. I couldn't even do the, the, the games well. So I wasn't even like fun to play with. Cause I was such a, <laughs> not, you know, I was just not at their levels. And, and, I, you know, my, my brother, what one of my brothers was very, very close in age. But I bet you remember when you were playing Pac-Man for the first time, when you had just the cherry, when you actually got the banana, you remember that, right? So what you do, what you, you did have the experience of, of getting better at something and progressing and understanding that you for your own sake actually won because you were improving. And that's one of the main components uh, that I work with in anyone who I'm, I'm training Um, at cloud nine, we keep track of, everything that the players do in the garage. So for example, as um, you know, Winsome, Berserker, Summit, these are brand new Korean players who just arrived last week. They are just embarking on their, um, on learning how to deadlift say, we'll take one specific movement. And it's a very simple one in that everyone has to pick something up off the ground at some time. Now, the ability to become stronger and to develop good posture and to be in good positions that all translate over to gaming um, are are some of the reasons why we do this. Um, The ability to increase your ability at something increases confidence. Um, But as these guys first learn the positioning and the mechanics of how to pick something up off the ground correctly, we build on those blocks so that then over time, they can see that not only is it important and it translates over to everyday life in order to, you know, pick things up that are relatively heavy, but they can also track that they're getting better and better over time. So that when they arrived, I can show them either data or pictures or video of them picking something up off the ground. Like actually there's a classic video that I have. That's maybe a five second clip of one of uh, the league of legends uh, coaches a year ago, learning how to squat. Now we don't need to show that picture in public, but when I I show him the video and we compare it to what he looks like now, lifting 
you know, not just his body weight, but holding quite a bit of weight as he's squatting, these don't even look like the same person, right? So he has over this year become so good at this that he is now one of the best examples that I give all the time um, about how you can progress over time. So we applaud not just people that are the best. In fact, we applaud and everyone can applaud for that person that goes from ground zero to increasing, you know, a hundred percent of what they, for example, can deadlift over time. Right. So let's applaud, um, you know, Berserker, Winsome and Summit as they're learning and gaining these abilities and not just deadlifting, it's, it's pull-ups, it's rowing, it's cardiovascular, it's strength. Um, we keep track of all these things so that we know that they are improving over time. It's also important to note that I'm not just this coach that's coming in that's saying you need to be good at all of this stuff for the sake of being good at all of this stuff. Like with all of these things, with this increase in physical ability, um, as I've you know, said a number of times before, they get better at everything. So it's not just about me um, inflicting on them this physical you know, suffering, I guess, is, 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 you know, the most negative way to put it, but I'm, I'm inviting them to learn how their bodies work, how to become stronger, more agile, more confident, more able in their physical selves, because there is a physical aspect to sitting in a terminal, to sitting through a best of five, you know, match that lasts five hours long. I mean, there are, there are other physical traditional sports that are less demanding from both a cognitive and physical sense than, um, than gaming. So these are real needs that these real athletes actually need to have. So, um, I don't know, that's a lot of stuff that yeah. I've gone over. I, I was, I was going to add just on, on that in the gym and to what we've experienced coaching virtually is, you know, I know Matt, at one point repeated a workout that the players had done at the beginning when they first started. And then he repeated it a number of weeks in and at the end of it, you know, everyone gives their scores. And he said, I just want you to know, like he did kind of the, you know, the math showed up and he was like that there, everyone had like a 20% or better improvement. And so when you look at things, like that, from that perspective, rather than in absolute numbers, but as percent growth, everybody wins. Everybody awesome. won that day because like that's just not a 20%. Exactly. And, Chris, and, and that's such a breakthrough. Like I never even thought about it that way. I like, I have a whole new view that like somebody just didn't pull me aside that Meg, look at how you improved. It's not about that. You never won. Cause I didn't never won, but that I did start competing against myself and I never even realized it. And that that's what you guys provide is this, uh, uh, this coaching, you know, for, for people that need it, like the, here I am, you know, decades later having a breakthrough and even within, even within the app, you know, the programming is set so that you do repeat things and you do keep track of your score. There's a journal that you put in after every, you know, for on the workout side, and you can see, you know, oh my gosh, the last time I did this and I was, you know, only, you know, doing, I was modifying my movements because I couldn't even really do this movement yet. But now not only am I doing the movement like in its entirety, but I'm also did better. Like you get to see that. And the other, just one thing I wanted to add on, because I think it gets to the community aspect of things is, you know, I remember Mike coming home to me one night and, you know, I share all of these wins, right? I mean, it's sort of like why I got so passionate about this too, within this community is him coming home one day and saying, oh my gosh, I just, what was, I was like, how did it go today? The best part was me watching so-and-so who was so new to this, like three months ago, teaching one of his teammates. Oh no. If you do it like this and me as the coach watching one of the players coach, another player through something yeah. and, and then letting each other be coached like that is community, you know, that yeah. is. Passing like along. seeing, look, yeah. one of the things in leadership is reproducing leaders. And that's, you know, that's where you guys are at is scaling this, you know, making the world truly a better place, reproducing yourselves. Yeah. yeah. And I do want to let Landon, Landon, I'm sorry, because I know, uh, go ahead, because I know that you had something to add. To <laughs> I was just, gonna, I was going to build on something that Mike mentioned there, because he, when he said there's a physical component to sitting at your station, right? Like when you're playing a game of a, a BO5 or something like that. Um, 
one of the things that you can track in the mind a little bit is that as time goes on, I'll use this hand so it's not blocking my face. As time goes on, your performance starts to dip. And the only way that you can counter that, and this is just a natural cycle that the performance dips, is you have to increase mental effort so that the performance stays at, at an optimal level through the entirety of it. Um, not only is there a physical component to sitting at your station, but that physical component of going through that suffering with Mike, it, it, suffering, in a, <laughs> to use that negative term, um, it teaches you how to increase uh, mental effort. And so when you start having those, those cognitive dips, when you're playing a game, that component of learning how to work out and pushing your body through something that is learning, or that's teaching your brain how to increase mental effort when things aren't going right, or when you're tired or you're fatigued or you're sore. Um, and that translates into your game performance. So as, as your performance starts to dip, you just naturally flip on the switch to increase your mental effort. And that's a very difficult thing to teach outside of the physical world. So by doing this mic training, right? Like your, your boots on the ground, doing these things with Mike, you're actually getting a, a, almost like a side benefit of you're teaching your brain how to increase mental effort when things are hard or things are tired or you're exhausted, you're fatigued or when whatever kind of negative thing there is, you're actually teaching your brain how to increase that effort to improve performance over time. And so there is this even like this physical component to playing games. But there's also this cognitive component of doing the workouts where it increases your brain's capabilities of producing what you want it to produce, which is fascinating, fascinating peripheral benefit of doing uh, things like what Mike does. So, and speaking of sitting for a long time, we've been seated now for about an hour. Um, so I want to do what we call a quick drill. So in gaming or any environment where you're seated for a long period of time, you really shouldn't be sitting for an hour at a time. So I don't know what your number is, if it's 15 minutes or 20 minutes or, you know, the duration of a scrim, if it's 45 minutes, um, these implementing these quick drills into activities where people sit a long time are really important. So if it's possible to just stand up by your station right now. Yes. Now we won't be able to see this in entirety. But I'm going to hold on to a, a desk or a wall that's next to me. And I'm going to just stand up nice and tall and swing my leg back and forth. So I have one leg on the ground and one leg swinging just back and forth. These are, um, they're called leg swings, right? It's not nice. super rocket science, but the idea is you're going to swing that leg. If it's, I'm starting with my right leg back and forth, I'm keeping my stomach nice and tight, my chest up tall. In fact, I don't even need to talk about that. It's just swing your leg back and forth for about 10 times and then do it on the other side. So what we're doing here as you're doing these leg swings is that these hip flexor muscles right at the front of your hips between your quads and your legs, keep moving now, um, are sitting, when you're sitting there at a, at a fixed length and they're gradually tightening up over time. They are so doing just by opening up the hip and then closing the hip again, is it it's lengthening and shortening, lengthening and shortening these hip flexors that cross not only the knee, but the hip as well. And now we've circulated some blood. We've lengthened the hip flexors. We've changed the whole you know, environment in our brain. We just went from sitting to focusing really intently onto moving our bodies. And now, you know, we could continue this with a couple of other movements, but we can sit down now and go back to what we were doing just like nothing happened but that physical change sparked a ton of physiologic sort of uh explosion in our body like different things are going on now we we could talk about them in another podcast which would be that say the science of fit gamer or the science of human movement or how all of this stuff connects but i think more importantly is understanding that that just created a shift and now we can sit down and talk again for another hour or however long that happens to be. Okay. So <laughs> I have to share how excited I am because this has never been done on my show and I would like to record it is, it is, is he going off to cloud nine? Yeah, okay. so <laughs> Before you go, I just okay. want to say, cause we'll, we'll wrap. I want to record this. So I can actually do this in my yep. shows. Let's record an episode um, just doing that for every show. So we are promoting what we're talking about because it's so easy to talk. 
it is some, it takes something to walk the walk. So I'm, I, I couldn't be more inspired. I can't thank you enough for joining the esports trade association, supporting us in community and body, mind, and spirit education, motivate, cultivate, collaborate. And, um, boy, um, if you guys have any parting words, please share, um, thank you for your membership. Thank you for your sponsorship. I can't wait to meet you at the at our conference. Um, and I know you have some great things coming up. You're going to be at Exposure's live event next month on the 25th. You're also going to be, um, you're also let's doing an event with Cope, with GameHers. And um, any parting words that you have for our audience before next time? Well, I will say that Mike's parting words are that he's heading off to the Cloud9 garage. So if there's traffic, he might be a little bit late. So he just bolted to, to go there. Those are Mike's parting words. Um, my parting words are just thank you so much, Megan, for giving us the opportunity to share um, what we are so passionate about. And um, with that, I'll, I'll hand it off to Landon. Yeah, the, the parting words I have is more along the lines of just if anybody out there is listening to the podcast and wants to learn more about us, feel free to reach out to any Mike, Kristen, or I, and we can always line up a conversation and tell you more about Fit Gamer or teach you some things or whatever kind of conversations you want to have. We're very, very friendly people, so feel free to shoot a message to any of us. And there are more quick drills other than leg swings and arm swings, and they're all in the app. There's a section for quick drills and how many you did today and how many you're targeted to do based on the number of hours you spend sitting. And so, Megan, I encourage you to go look up all these Frankensteins and, you know, different types of quick drills that you can do and have fun with. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking we should do a quick drill for standing a quick drill for sitting and a quick drill for our eyes. Let's, let's record that and incorporate that into um, a sponsorship for the show. Great. Yeah, definitely. All right. Another great episode of Esports Connected. I'm your host, Megan Van Patten. Thank you all. Thank you.